to the cloud. Welcome. It is the 19th or to, in your time zone. Yes, still the 19th of June. Yes. And it is, this is Google Summer of Code, Git Cache Maintenance. Thanks, Rishikesh, for being here. Let's go ahead. Okay, what, okay. what are the topics you'd like to discuss? Okay, I have written down. Uh, can you like share your screen so that you know you can open I the sure. project and yeah, I'll show you the status, tell you the status. Okay, so here's here is the screen where I was actually doing some some further manipulating. Is this the screen you want? What would you like to see? Do you want to see? Uh, can you like run the project? Sure, you bet. So here we go. Let's let's bring up a uh, this one. So you want to you want to run it with a with a local Jenkins? Yeah. Okay. Great. Yes. Absolutely. Jank, and, and if I remember right, you've got it already configured to run uh, with Jenkins 2.346. Yeah. And we'll need a web browser, won't we? So let's get a web browser. And eventually it will come up and localhost 8080. slash Jenkins. I think. Ah, I was right. Good. Okay. So I worked on the scheduling part, you know, scheduling maintenance tasks and adding it into a queue. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not sure that is, you know, uh, like the code is, I've written the code for it. Can you like once go through it so that, you know, to confirm if it is the right way or not? Let, let's go through it together. That's, that's a great, great plan. So you can now enter the cron syntax. So like uh, just enter the cron syntax, you know, for every minute so that we can test it. Oh, every minute. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to incremental repack every minute and we're going to, yes, I meant let, it. Good. Let that be, yeah. And I'm going to GC weekly and, whoops, weekly. And I'm going to do commit grab prefetch daily. And, okay, so now I'm going to save that. Oh, wait, uh, I, I, I don't know about, uh, like, can you run, write it like at the rate weekly kind of a thing? I'm sorry, can I do what? Can you write the uh, given input as at the rate weekly? Does it take uh, Jenkins? It should. That? That, that's, that is allowed cron syntax elsewhere. So I oh. don't know if it's allowed cron syntax in, uh, in, in the parser you're using, but it's definitely allowed cron syntax here. So for instance, let's create a new job, um, cron scheduled. And we're going to do a freestyle project. Come on, come on, you can do it. Okay, so we want to build periodically. And now when we look at this, the help, it will tell us things like, oh, come on, where is it? Somewhere in here is the hint of the other allowed syntaxes. Oh, now that's interesting. I'm just sure that it was allowing daily. Just a minute. Ah, here it is, here it is. In addition, at yearly, annually, these. Okay, so let's try those. So we're going to say it's going to execute yearly, annually, monthly, weekly, daily, midnight, and hourly. Okay. And now what does that tell us? Did it give us an okay? I need to close the help now, don't I? Okay, and it says, yes, this would have run. So next run would be at Sunday, June 19th, 701. Ah, so it will run very soon, within within about an hour. 
So I I I didn't I don't know why is it throwing an error on my thing because I I didn't write the yearly annually thing. So I'll I'll have to check that out. Well, and and it may not throw an error. Let's let's take a look. Let's see what because I think you had a. What if we say here that? So let's say hourly. Uh, save, save, save. Oh, you have to save it first. So okay. It's throwing an error in the terminal. So like Invalid. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So, so there's, so that's, we learned something. The, the, the syntax that you're using is, or the checker you're using is not allowing the same syntax that Jenkins users are accustomed to elsewhere. I'll, I'll have to check that out. Oh, but even uh, even now it's saying invalid cron. No, no, there are other uh, there are other weekly hourly, right? So the oh, oh, right. Value. I see what you're saying. Yes, I need to make it valid. So let's do it. Let's here. Let's back here to let me grab some other examples that the, that are available there, and we'll we'll paste a few actual valid examples. Oops, wrong one. So here, cron scheduled configure. Now let's go read the help. Okay, so the at the at sign based ones did not. Let's try some other examples like these. Ah, that's not. Let's give myself a cut buffer where I can cat copy those things into. Okay, so we're going to do every 15 minutes. And this one, we're actually going to do it because you had advised, we're going to do it every one minute. Now this one, every, there we go, okay, every 45 minutes. And this one, and this one. Okay, shall we try it? Yeah. Okay, and that, and that yeah. was accepted. Good. Okay, now, and I don't remember if this is actually an every minute syntax or not. So, but. Oh. So uh, now the data has been saved internally. Like if you go to that folder, right? Uh, in with the workspace folder in your ID, you'll okay. find the file there, the XML file. Okay, so yeah, you want me to look inside. Actually, I it's easier for me if I just use my file browser. Okay, so here you want me to go to the this thing to hub. My plugins, Git plugin, uh, work, work. And, and then here. there's the uh, Git maintenance Jenkins plugin, the XML file. Get about me. about file. Jenkins oh, plugin. There it is. Git. This yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yes. All right. So let's drag that into our friendly local editor. Okay, here so we go. So here the data is stored internally. Mm hmm. Okay, now if you, you know, like switch, you, you know, terminate Jenkins and run it again, the data is loaded from this file. You can try that out also. That's also working. Okay, uh, good. Very good. All right. So, so if, for instance, I do, where is my Jenkins? My Jenkins is right here. If I do a slash restart, Flash restart, restart. Oh, it won't let me oh. restart. Okay, so if mm -hmm. I bring up this thing and hit the enter key, and of course it's Windows, so it says there's a busy file, so I have to interrupt it and run it again. So now all the configuration is loaded from this file. So that's what I worked on. Oh, good, right. So what you're showing is, what you've shown now is you have successfully persisted the definition yeah. and it's 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 coming back after the 
Very good. Okay, so let's see that. So let's go manage Jenkins. Oops, come on, respond. Here we go, patience. Clearly, I need a faster computer. Or maybe I just need to do less stuff with my computer. Okay, manage Jenkins. And get maintenance. And there it is. It. Yeah. Ooh, so, okay. So okay. the... Uh, now, in yeah. terms of tra tracking the tracking the little things like the weekly, annually, etc., you'll do that somehow. I'll do I'm, that. Yeah, I'll wait. do that. Okay, because that way we we avoid the overhead of of issue reports in in Jira. I don't think they'll help you move as quickly as you you can. Great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll look into that. That's not a problem. Great. Uh, so now, uh, one, uh, can you like schedule one job for like every minute kind of a thing? Like in, uh -huh. in so incremental repack, I think, is actually scheduled for every minute. But okay. let's, now, can you, yeah. let's be absolutely sure and do and a then save. Click on save. And then click on execute. Okay, execute. So now, now at, at, after a minute, you'll see, uh, at the you know, in the terminal. In the terminal, you'll see a queue uh, being printed. Okay. So Good. You'll have to wait for a minute. So. So exactly at six fourteen your time, uh, it'll get printed on the screen. Good. All right. Well, so then, then let me. You, are you okay? Well, oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this task has been scheduled for execution right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. The code for it is written as in the you know in the task scheduler file. So, uh, one moment. The cron so, yeah there. So basically, if scheduler. you open the cron file, the cron file, okay. Uh huh. This file, uh, if you see the code there, the get recurrence period. This thing is set to run every minute, okay. And every minute, uh, what the function called schedule maintenance task is run, okay. Which which checks the cron syntax whether it's valid or not, and then if it's valid, it's added to the maintenance queue. Okay. Uh, okay. And and there's not already something in Jenkins that will do, would do this for us. This was something you had to create on your own. Uh, so there wasn't there isn't already a, a scheduler facility inside Jenkins. That surprises me. It may be there. I'm not sure because when I explored, I found this path. If there is another path, we could follow that. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. So, so you're open to other, and if we find if we find another way to do it, great. Okay. Okay. And then now, uh, uh, if you go to the now ta task, uh, sched, you know, task scheduler class. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there you'll you'll you, here you can see uh, the scheduled task. It checks all the configuration whether you know this uh, uh, you know maintenance task is valid or not. If it is valid, it's added to the queue. Okay. Here I had a doubt. Okay. I created a new thread in Jenkins using you know the runnable class. Okay. The, this logic. Uh, is there a pre-built way of creating a thread, or can I use you know? the java thread to create a thread uh, as i as far as i know you can use the java thread to create a thread i'd have oh, to look oh. at other examples to be sure but i i don't see any reason not to use a new thread let's let's do some checking elsewhere let's see what is what is something that ah the the global build discarder as it would be my example i i assume you had looked at it was it using new thread to construct the thread no, no, no. I don't think it was using a thread. It it used to call the build function and that used to internally do it. So I don't know how. Oh, exactly oh so well, so if any so it was using a build, huh? Interesting. Okay. All right. Well, let's let me okay. So global build discarder. What I'm doing is looking at, okay, build the starter. So in GitHub, and now what it's got is, it 
this is the strategy. Where is the implementation? What does the Oh, I think that's present in the Jenkins. Oh, oh is it, it, it build discarder is part of Jenkins global build discarder is part of Jenkins core, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm looking in the wrong place. Thank you. Okay, Thank so let's look at core. Now I don't find it. That's not Attic Sensible Background Build Discarders. Here we go. Okay, this is Daniel's poll. It's been merged, and here's what changed. Okay, so Background Global Build Discarder, which is an async periodic work. Has, a, has an execute method and a process job. Oh, oh, so what it's doing is it's iterating over each job and calling process job on each job. Okay. Okay, so this is his global build discard, background global build discarder. I think this uses an async, yeah, async periodic work. Right. I, the reason, yeah. So async periodic work creates a new thread which runs asynchronously. Uh, the reason I was more preferred towards periodic work is because there's a timer thread in Jenkins, which you know, every you know, based on that uh the uh, recurrence, you know, function, it it uh, runs periodically so i was thinking if i use a periodic work the amount of work uh, you know pro a task that uh, thread has to do is very less so i was thinking we don't have to create another thread was what i was thinking okay and and i i don't have anything to disagree with your logic so that that that, that sounds reasonable to me and exploring it and experimenting with it feels like the best way to decide if it should be periodic work or async periodic work the logic would be the same it's only about whether we are going to create a new thread or use the same thread great yeah okay uh, oh 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 this is this is a reminder we need to be sure we've got a symbol good okay and what exactly is the symbol what a symbol does is this allows us to use to refer to a capability in Jenkins by a shorthand notation, in this case, build discarders. And okay. build discarders then is can be put into a configuration as code definition file and used to define the settings for something so that when Jenkins restarts, the settings or when a, a brand new Jenkins is is created is, is is being spun up, I can have the definition already that, hey, these are the things I want as my global configuration. Okay, I, that's actually a, a good one for me to check separately if yeah they, it's this is that is a good feature we should be sure that we include that you're, you include in the plugin that it can be configured by configuration as code. So very good. All right. So sorry, I was, I was, I'm not being as helpful here as I should be. Your, the question that led us to this was you wanted to, to decide, should we use, help take me back to what the question oh, uh, we're should asking. Should we use, you know, the Java thread or should we use, is there a thread in, you know, where I have to create a thread in Jenkins and link it to something so that we do the work or should I, can I create a Java thread? So I don't object to your creating a Java mm -hmm. thread. I'm just a little surprised to see that Daniel was able to do global build discarder without creating a thread. So is that because he used async periodic work instead of using periodic work? Oh, uh, I even I thought of creating uh, like if you go back to that code, okay, which I've written, if you, uh, you know, the reason why I, I, I could have create you know, run the maintenance task in this function itself. But the reason I chose not to do it and create a new thread is assume if the maintenance tasks, a task, you know, to uh, execution takes a lot of time, like uh, an hour or like 30 minutes or so. 
then this thread would get blocked, you know, to just run that maintenance task. And, you know, this uh, thread again wouldn't run the next minute because it would be busy doing something else. And, and, and that makes sense if, if it's important that we must, that this thing must run every minute. The, my thought was, isn't, oh, no, no. Okay, right. Because background, so the global build discarder is not, um is not allowed to be defined how frequently it checks right this thing yeah this thing is different in that way in that it will it will okay for instance yeah what it's defined is it will run not more than once an hour yeah okay all right so you're saying here what you've got to do is you have to be sure that the task scheduler gets invoked more frequently and therefore a thread is is the best choice as a way to 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 start a separate Process. thread of execution yeah. and not disrupt this one okay yeah, not block this one and i that that seems reasonable to me i don't have experience in this part of jenkins so i can't i can't promise you that you won't later discover mark wait was absolutely wrong okay so, uh, so that was a, a big confusion, like, you know, should I create a thread or, or do I use async periodic work or periodic work? That and was one thing I wanted to ask. So basically now this thread will have the functionalities of executing the maintenance task. Okay. So that's what is the functionality of this thread. Yeah. And now, so this thread is then going to execute the maintenance task and is there uh, do you already have safeguards in place to prevent a create an explosion of threads? Uh, say, so, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have I have that thing. I, okay. I've, I've added it in the if statement. Like if it's alive, then you don't add it. Okay, don't create a thread. So, ah, uh, I see. So this here is the safeguard. Says, hey, if something's already running then do not create a new th another thread so this yeah. is that's how you'll you'll defend against an explosion yes. of threads okay yeah. all right and so, this this mm -hmm. status report here that you're using for diagnostics that's mm -hmm. reporting the state of this task executor yeah and and it, and it could be that in the time between here and here it may have finished. finished and if it did it will say okay it's no longer alive uh but it, it at least reports the the reality good yeah, okay yeah. so uh and the thread wouldn't even be created if though if there are no tasks in the queue because it wouldn't make sense right so i added another safeguard in in the if like the maintenance queue dot is empty so if the, if the you know maintenance tasks if there are no tasks to execute it so there's no use of creating the thread so uh that was also added right okay uh, good now yeah so now inside this uh task executor you know thread if uh, the so i was thinking now you know we discussed about getting the repos you know path path of the uh, you know, get caches present on the Jenkins controller. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, for that, I would, uh, you know, need, uh, so we have discussed like there's a get SCM class from which I can get the, uh, what do you tell, uh, path of the caches, but that gives me only one, uh, what do you tell, uh, path, okay. Uh, and to get that path also, I need to pass the URL of the repository. And how do I get the URL of all the repositories? Is there any way in Jenkins? May, know, so we may have to path? we may have to extend the Git client to give you that information, or extend something to give you that information. Uh, if it's Git client, or uh, that's perfectly okay. Right now, you're saying that the the only access method that there is to the list of caches is indexed by by URL. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so then I would think what we need to do is is add another method that get, lets you ask for, lets you iterate the list. List, okay. 
So shall we shall we open it up and look at that together? Yeah, or yeah. Maybe. Would you prefer to explore it on your own? Yeah, yeah. No, no. I wanted to see how, how that thing goes. So. Okay, so let's go looking together and let's look and get client plugin. Uh, before I do that, let me be sure that just a minute. It'll be just moments while I I need to get my condition set up before I bother to open it, cancel. Give me another bash shell, okay. Okay, so let me get that ready to go, just a moment. Okay, so here we go. All right, I was just try had to see if I had any in progress work that I, I couldn't show on a recording. All right, all right. So let me get rid of that branch. Hit pull. Okay, now. Okay, now let's open it and we'll go do some looking. Okay, so what we're trying to find is the things that are related to the caches that are involved in see what might be a way that we could find that we could look for the word cache check out change log okay it's got to be in there see i okay uh, oh, unsupported command so it must be either inside get client or inside CLI git. I, I thought it would be in the git plugin itself because I thought uh, git client was only for execution. Right, so. right. So let's go look there. Very good. Okay, so let's look here. Oh, there's a git SCM. Yeah. Ah. Good. Okay. So let's go looking in Git SCM. Okay. Looking at the methods on Git SCM. Where would I find those caches? Well, hang on just a minute while I do some other searching. Let's do it this way. Okay, so abstract get SCM source, there it is, has a cache directory. Okay, so. Okay, here we go. So the thing that holds the caches is abstract get SCM source. So we can certainly look here. 
uh, that uh, in that there's a uh, I think there's a method to get a cache. For that, you need the URL. So no. great. So let's look. And so get cache entry. Get yes. Here we go. So yeah. get cache dir. And the, the cache entry that it's looking for is the remote. Okay, good. So what we what I assume you're going to have to do is add in abstract get SCM, add another method that lets you iterate over all the caches. Yeah. Oh, now, is, so for, for that, I need the URLs. And you know, is there a way to get all the URLs, like all the rem uh, remote? Uh, actually i don't think you need so i would i think what you want to do is all right so notice here that there's uh this thing that looks at jenkins.get root their caches so this is the directory where the caches are stored okay okay so then i don't even need this function right so I can directly use that path. If... Well, what, what I think you would want is you want, I think we want to keep all knowledge of where is the cache stored, et cetera, inside abstract get SCM source. And so mm -hmm. you would want to create a method in abstract get SCM source that lets you iterate over the caches. Um... Can you repeat? Like, so I, I think you want to create a method here in abstract get SCM source that lets you iterate over the list of caches. Okay, okay. So that you know, I get all the you know, uh, direct, uh, you know, caches present on the Jenkins controller. Right. Well, and so that so that you're not you're not spreading the knowledge of where are the caches or how are the caches managed beyond this class this because class. for instance it's got it's got a locking mechanism right mm -hmm. and and some of the operations you're doing like garbage collection may need mm -hmm. to take a lock mm -hmm. and yeah. so so it may be that you you want absolutely to while iterating you may say okay give me let's let's walk through the list of caches and on each cache, you want to get a lock on that cache optionally. Oh, okay. uh, another, uh, wait, I have a doubt here. Uh, how, how, why would we need a lock, like in, in the sense, like how, how would a lock be useful or how would it help us? The, my thought was that I'm not sure that you want concurrent access to the cache by other parts of Jenkins while you're running garbage collection. Okay. Okay. So basically you're like, uh, you're, you're saying that, you know, there can be other uh, plugins which may be using this cache. And when I am running a GC, it shouldn't, you know, those plugins, sh uh, you know, shouldn't access this cache. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's, that's at least the concept that because okay. Git has its own concurrency defenses. It, it, it really has its own concurrency defenses. However, its concurrency defenses are based usually on command line Git being the only thing that operates on that repository. And in our environment, we allow either command line Git or JGit to access a repository. And so my thinking was you may need to, to apply a lock um, for operations that you know are not, what, what might you say, that are that are prone to problems if there's concurrent access. Now, my understanding prefetch, for example, should not have any problem with, with concurrent access. You should be allowed to do prefetch without disrupting anyone, at least based on the, I think that's what we learned from reading the Git man pages. Mm -hmm in in project proposal phase right yeah okay so then we'll have to think about what would be needing it so i think a gc would need it uh i don't know i'll have to explore that part whether which which one need a cache and which which one needs a lock and which one doesn't 
Right. And, and I, and I think, I think you, you, you just, you just said it very well that, that, you'll need to explore which which things do need to be locked and which things don't because some of the operations should not require locking yeah so that makes sense i think i'll i'll i'll, I'll so basically i'll add a method in this which you know iterates through all the caches okay and you know uh, give give me the path of that cache and you know and add a lock to it like based on the condition to so that i can run the maintenance tasks Good. Yeah, that that sounds good to me. So yeah, that was yeah, that was something on the list. And then okay, uh, then I had another doubt regarding you know the test. Can you or uh, go to the task scheduler test? Sure. That's so task scheduler test. Yeah. All right, so test packages, task scheduler test. Uh, here, this one. Okay. Yeah, I, I wrote this function which fails one or wantedly because you know I'm not able to test this function. Okay. So now I'll be needing a queue. I'll, how, how do I, you know, fake a situation where I'm scheduling maintenance tasks? Yeah, so so I think. Uh, so if if you're okay, let's let's play with a little bit together. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So so what I would do is I would open up task scheduler here, and and at least in my IDE, it's got an option that I can right click tools, create update tests, and it will construct skeletons of the tests for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what it said was, and and so it's inserted, the green blocks here are insertions that it made. So it says tests, it's added one new test, schedule tasks. So let's let's call that. And let's see, so we've got task scheduler is this. And then we're going to say task scheduler dot schedule tasks. Okay, so so that now and it turns out we don't we didn't need, although maybe let's take advantage. Well, it's since it did this for us, I'm gonna do it like this because we're going to need a task scheduler That's on good. every single method right yeah okay and oh i see you had already had that this the test same. these are the same tests yeah, these yeah, are, yeah okay right because this one you were just doing a a a, a trivial something do something so i can assert something yeah okay so now the question is how do we how what do we what are the externally visible things that schedule tasks can do that we could assert because the maintenance tasks present in that class would be private okay so right uh, yeah and then uh any other fields also i think mostly would be private so and I wouldn't want a, a you know method you know which returns the maintenance task. Okay, so let's well, so let's let's take let's take a look and see what what we could do. So let's go look at your source code. All right, so here we've got schedule tasks. So one, I guess one option, I, I see that you've got check is task in queue, but you've made it private. Mm -hmm. We could make it package protected and mm -hmm. use it to check that a task has been queued, but not make it part of the public API, just make it package protected for test purposes. Okay. Is this one that you've seen that you'll need to use elsewhere? Oh, you're already oh. using it here, right? So, yes, yes. so, so testing, 
testing that would probably be a good thing. And so at least a technique I've used elsewhere in the Git plugin is say something like this, package protected for test, for use by tests. And then I take the private off of it. And now I can now call it from my test class and, and see, hey, is this the, oh, good. And you showed me how to do the streaming thing. Nice, yeah. So nice use of a lambda. Very good. Yeah. Um, so so then if we go back here to task executor tests, oh not tasks, sorry, task scheduler tests, this one. And and again, I'm cheating. I'm going to use my my IDE and let it generate the uh, the methods. Mm -hmm. So it says, oh, check is task in queue. And I'm pretty sure that whatever IDE you're using likely has this same facility. You may want to look for it because okay. having somebody else generate your test prototypes, at least for me, is a real help. It reminds me, oh, I should have a test for that method and that method. Yeah. Okay, so here we're going to use task scheduler instead of instance. Okay, now we need a real task. And that, of course, is the wrong constructor. So, so you, I think you'll have to pass a task type and then, yeah, oh, a good, task right. type. Okay, so we're going to take a task type dot, oh, I want to do, perfect. Prefetch, yes, excellent okay. choice. Okay, so now, and I don't need to use the expected result thing, and I much prefer, and, and I have to just acknowledge, I like what's called ham crest exceptions, okay. where we state it as assert that. Okay, this one is a Boolean, so maybe that's a bad choice. Assert true that. Oh, but uh, you, okay, but then uh, uh, first I need to create a maintain, like, you know, have to add it to the maintenance stuff, right? Uh, uh, oh, those conditions. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, good point. So, all right, let's, uh, let's do the, <laughs> let's do the, let's do something different. Let's do it like this, right? With that, I think, yeah, that would. Okay, so we don't need to call this at all. So I've gone a little longer than I, I wanted to in terms of not having run this yet. Let me execute this and watch what happens. Just a minute. And my IDE has some configuration issues right now. So I need to go into my ID, into my command line and recompile. So the whole point of asking this question is, do I have to test every method I can or like, uh, uh, because some, some things are like, I don't know how do you test them. If get, it's get, you know, the logic to test them. Yeah, and usually, Usually, if you don't know how to write the automated test, it's a good hint that the, lo the logic of the thing may be too complicated and you need to split it out so that it becomes testable components. Okay. okay. So, for example, the, for me, I and, and others have different approaches, but for me, I prefer to test with automation as much as I possibly can so that when I make changes later, I get caught by my tests if I made a mistake. Yeah. So I think I can split this function into multiple sub functions kind of a thing. That was, that was my assumption so that you could, mm -hmm. so that you, so that you can test it. Now, if you, if while writing the test, you realize, oh, I can test this with the following easy steps, just mm -hmm. write the test then. But if okay. if you find, oh, well, I'm having difficulty, for instance, oftentimes I may find it difficult to get to something like that. 
And when I find that, I, I will typically then say, oh, what do I need to do to make that so I can reach it with a test? Yeah. And it, it package protected is one of those techniques, right? This technique is, why did I make it package protected? Only so that I could test it. There was no other That's reason true. to accept to make it so I could reach it with a test. Because yeah. then I don't have to when when future releases are happening, I can I can rely on the test to help me without having to interactively check everything. Yeah, makes sense. So I, I think I'll have to go through this again, you know, try to split it into functions and check whether I can test it or like try testing it again. Great. Well, and I wanted to to sh let's see there. Uh, I was I was in the middle of experimenting with one of your other other things, task executor, doing that it's same task technique. Scheduler. Yeah, task scheduler. No, no. What I'm saying is, okay. I had done the oh. same thing with task executor that we were just okay. describing with task scheduler of trying to add tests for each of the methods that's exposed in the API, and then mm -hmm. use that to explore the implementation more more thoroughly. Yeah. Okay, so this one, we I say- I think this is uh, uh, JUnit version three, right? Uh, uh, no, no, this is JUnit four. J this is definitely four. four. Okay, okay. Now it's not JUnit five. Yeah, yeah. And, and the reason it's not JUnit five is this syntax right here, this Jenkins rule thing is not available mm -hmm. in JUnit five. They, okay. they considered rules to be a, a, a something they eventually removed from J, they, they removed when they made the transition to JUnit 4 or JUnit okay. 5. But Jenkins rule is crucial here because it's I think it's that the would thing, be a breaking change, right? If you do it to unit version 5. Right. So, well, and, and I've used, I've used JUnit 5 in other projects, in other Jenkins plugins, but you can't use JUnit 5 with a Jenkins rule. There isn't a Jenkins rule, a, a JUnit 5 compatible Jenkins rule yet. Okay. So, so this here you you're, you're stuck with JUnit 4. Mm -hmm. But this one, this one I had to, I think this may have been the one that I had to add J, Jenkins rule to it in order to get it to pass. If you're okay, okay. let's go look and see. Nope, it still didn't pass. All right, so here's, I had I had pushed to your branch, a change. Let's see if let's see if my change arrived. Use Jenkins rule in task schedule test. Okay, it did arrive, but all the tests did not pass. Are you okay if we spend just a minute finding out why? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, task, task. Oh, task test. So the one I changed seems to now now be passing now if we look at the test history there it no is that right okay if i look at the test history graph it shows number 17 failed five number 16 failed three i actually have more failures not less mm -hmm. Well, that's terrible, Hrushikesh. Okay, so what did I do wrong? Latest test result shows task, task test is failing. Okay, so why was it passing on the previous build? I don't know what I broke on task test. It's, it's a different failure. So interesting. Task scheduler test was failing, so it's fixed. So, the, so I succeeded in fixing that, but now we've got a failing test in task test. That's executable, okay. So, so if you want, we could go look at that together, or are there other things that are more valuable to you? Uh, okay, wait. Before that, I have a few things. If you finish off with that, then yeah. Uh, so there's this thing about form validation okay so uh, like as you have seen i uh, once you submit a wrong a wrong uh, you know uh cron syntax kind of a thing it, it does it doesn't let you submit the form it throws an error on the terminal 
right so i wanted to show notifications and all those things you know but if i'm not able to use that design libraries notifications uh in this because once i submit the form i'll get a response from the client and this page would be loaded again right so how do i add a notification to show key to show on the screen that there's an error uh or something like that okay so let's 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 experiment with that for a little bit and see if we can find something that's already doing that kind of thing for us you know something after i submit the form and then there's an error and then it shows okay so like so so after submitting the form not while while working with the form i would think you want it while working with the form don't you you want to check it even before they submit the form yeah but then i'm not able to like but then assume once they you know enter all the de details you know all the cron syntax de data and then they click the submit button or the save button so there is eventually going to be a request sent to the back end right so i was thinking in that sense so so when the request request is sent to the back end what I'm I'm not sure what you're envisioning. We would tell them. So it would take me through that again. Let's. So, so I'm on the Git maintenance page, and mm -hmm. here I've entered a definition. Okay, now I now, press uh, save. Yeah. So now, if you enter a wrong syntax, like can you enter a wrong syntax in any of those? Sure. So, so let's put yeah. here. Yeah, and then now I I click save. Okay. Even though this error is being displayed, assume the administrator saves it. Okay. Okay, so so if if the administrator presses save with with invalid input here, what are we going to do with it? I think that's your question. Yes. So so your when I click save in the terminal, it's showing it's there's a it's it's displaying that there's an invalid right. It cron says syntax. here invalid invalid cron syntax, right? So now I have to, you know, I, so basically what am I doing? I'm redirect. I have to redirect it back to this page, but then I want to use that notification to show the notification on the screen. So. Ah, right. Okay. So let's, let's see if we can find, find an example like that. So the idea is you want a way to, because if you just return them to this page, if when they press save, they just came back to this page. Wouldn't that already be enough? Uh, but th but then uh, will they know, uh, like how will the administrator know like there's an error? Like he would he just look at it or would they look at it or? Good good question. So then maybe to improve the experience, what you're saying is after the save comebacks, you would like to mutate this page, where it says has a big dialogue at the top that says you have invalid syntax on this page yeah, yeah. right okay or, so let's yes and let's let's see what we can do with that so let's let's see if there's some other examples of ways that's handled so if i look at let's try well here let's let's try it here's here's one we're going to enter an invalid url for a git repository uh we're going to say um R sync. Okay, so that's what it did. It just changed and said, hey, it tried the operation and stayed on the page. Okay, okay. and if I save this, is that anything like will it stop I've, me from saving? It does. No. There's nothing that stops you from saving it. It just says, "Hey, that's bogus." Okay. Because I, why I am trying to do this is because assume if I don't, if I save this internally, uh, you know, a wrong cron syntax, there'll be so many errors being thrown in different places whenever I try to use that cron syntax and whenever I'm trying to execute it, there would be errors which will, you know, so many errors which would so, uh, you know, which will be thrown. So I was thinking if I stop it initially only you know prevent entering a wrong cron syntax and saving it then i wouldn't have to check it anywhere you know elsewhere and and i wish that were the case but the reality is because you'll be supporting configuration as code the administrator could by configuration as code give you a completely invalid syntax as well okay. so i think i think you have to check syntax 
everywhere. You have to send, check syntax at at any location that accepts the syntax, right? So, so you. So basically, I'm checking the cron syntax at two places. One when he's when they are entering the data into the input field, and one where when they are submitting the data. Uh, you know, when they're submitting to store it internally, those are the two places I'm checking. So if, uh, you know, uh, so basically when you're saying as configuration, like in configuration as code, and can they uh, enter, you know, like cron syntaxes, can they send it to us? Like, can they enter it? Yeah, so, well, so let's, I think, I think I can show you an example of a configuration as code defined, um, just a minute. Let's let's see if I've got one. I think I do. Uh, so here is uh, is that uh, that is that text readable for you, Hushikesh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So um, if we look at, I suspect that let's see, Git branch. Okay, good. So we've got ref config. So this is this is a Jenkins installation that I maintain with configuration as code. And here are the definition files. Let's see if we can find one that has a cron syntax in it. There we go. Ah, that's good. Nope, nope, that didn't help. Okay. Oh, so there aren't any here. Okay, let's see. Where would I find a cron? Oh, oh no, no, that's that's not okay. Hmm. So let me do some continued looking here. Oh, oh, I know what where we can do. Is no, is there a thing in global configuration that has a schedule defined? Configure system, just a minute. Okay, schedule, fair, the priority sorter. Ah, yes, here we go. Maven scheduled, oh, this is a terrible example, but all right, Maven scheduled repository cleaner. It does not support configuration as code, so that won't help me. Let's see, so, so I apologize. I don't have a configuration as code example that would show it in context. I can I could attempt to create one, find a plugin that that does configuration as code and takes cron syntax, and and make sure that I can share that example with you the next time we meet. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think that would help. Okay, good. Yeah. So because when I let's see, well, maybe actually, maybe, maybe there is some. Okay, this is mostly agent definitions. And this is the README, okay. And this is the security config. And these are tools and the tools certainly don't need scheduling syntax. Okay, unclassified seems like a really likely one to have it. Just a minute, Rushikesh, if you can stand for me to look for just a little bit in case we can find an example. Priority, nope, sorry. Okay, I don't have a good example of, of a, a configuration as code setup that includes cron syntax. No, no worries. Uh, uh, so, so about the architecture of the form submission, so would you like how, how would i proceed with that is what i wanted to know so do you so, want yeah do we want a error being displayed like a notification or is this fine because i think i think for now just just display it here and accept that whatever data they stored we will put there even if it's invalid input um Okay, but I, I think that will cause a lot. So basically what exactly is happening right now, if you enter a wrong invalid cron syntax and click save, right? It's just mm -hmm. going to throw the, uh, you know, 
uh, error in the terminal, but it, it isn't storing internally. So if you go to that work file, no, there's nothing present there. So all this new data hasn't been saved. So that would, you know, prevent us from having any problems anywhere, you know, somewhere else whenever I'm reading the prompt syntax. Yeah, so, oh, well, okay, let's see. So, so I think there must be, there must be a way to do what you're suggesting. So let's, maybe we can find another example that will let us, because what, what I think what you're saying is it will be much better for the user if we, for certain classes of mistakes, we tell them you're not, I, I did not even save what you, what you asked for yeah. because it is so yeah. broken that I didn't <laughs> save it. So let's exactly. let's take a look at this and see see if we can find some examples of a case where something is so broken that we refuse to store it. If you think of it in that way, it would be easier for us also to implement it because uh, if we store an invalid, you know, cron syntax, then whenever we read it to execute it, we have to keep checking whether that syntax is correct or not. Whereas before, only when he's when they submit the form, if we check it. Uh, you know, it'll be a very good safeguard was what I was thinking. Yeah, it's just, I'm not, I'm not sure that, that your, your desire to not have to check it, as far as I can tell, you'll get input from users. And anytime you get input from a user, you've got to check, is it valid syntax, don't you? Yeah. Um, I don't, like, uh, okay. Can you repeat what you said? Like once again. So anywhere that the code could receive data from a user, you have to check that the data from the user is valid, I think. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that I'm doing it, okay? And that right. I'm storing it in the file, okay? And, but do, do I have to check it when I'm reading it from the file as well? I think so, because, because well, I would think that if you don't, check it from the user, then you might have people like me who store their XML files into a source control system and change the XML files themselves. Oh, okay, makes sense. Okay. And, and I, I say okay. people like me because I am exactly one of those people who does who does exactly that. And I, I sometimes store my XML files because they're they're readable data files. I can use them and, and make them do things that I want. Okay, so okay, that could be an issue then. So I, whenever I have to read or whenever I'm executing, I'll have to check the mean, uh, you know, whether the cron syntax is valid or not. Right, I, I think so anyway. So let's let's test. Okay, here we've got a malformed URL re reference. It's still malformed. If I save it, it allowed me to save it. And what did it do with it? It, it retained it. So, yeah. so it, so the, the general pattern seems to be use, take whatever the user gives us, show them a warning in this red text, but don't reject, don't discard their, their input, even if it's, even if it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I think I'll, I'll also follow that pattern then. All right. Do you, so since the two of us are still here, do you have other questions? I guess one question from me to you, are you okay if I, as a matter of personal pride, go find out why, how I broke more tests okay, and sure. <laughs> attempt, to, yeah. attempt to make changes? Are you okay if I push changes yeah, yeah, to your code to, to yeah, fix it's tests? Fine with, yeah, it's fine with me. Uh, I have still two two more questions. Okay, I know it's, Go ahead. it's late. Yeah, but it's fine. So uh, two more questions. One thing is I added permissions to that jelly file. Okay, to you know for so that administrators only can use it. But I, I don't know whether it's working or not. Okay, I think administrator is by default true or something. Whenever I'm developing the plugin, so I'm not sure whether uh, at, uh you know is it only for administrators or are everyone able to use it or not. Well, and, and so let's try it. Let's first, let's first enable security.
Okay, so what I just did was I enabled security. I'm now going to sign up. Okay, so, and it says my password is only moderate strength, nonsense. That's a very good password. Okay, so I just created myself an account. And so now I, I am an administrator. So first check, I can do get maintenance. There it is. All right, now I'm going to log out. Manage Jenkins. Get maintenance. Let's fix the mistake I made. Save. Did it save? And yeah, it saved in the terminal. So as far as I can tell, it did save. So I think that since I am not logged in, let's see if I can, let me check. Maybe I've got wrong permissions. Let's check the, the security configuration because it may be that I've got it. Okay, authorization is currently, anyone can do anything. Let's change it to logged in users can do anything. Okay. okay, so now I'm logged in. As a logged in user, I'm going to change this to 42. Oops, 42 is the wrong value. So I'm going to change it to Six, save. Okay, save. so now I'm going to log out. And now, oh, see, look at this. It's already proving that it notice managed Jenkins isn't even there anymore. Yeah, okay, so. Just a minute, now I've got to find the URL to manage Jenkins so that I can, so that I can check that it, okay, so this, is the URL that I need. Okay, remember that URL. Okay. I'm going to log out. Now I'm going to enter that URL. And it says, uh-uh. Okay. So I don't know so, if it's okay. your, your security checks or someone else's, but mm -hmm. security checks have blocked me from doing that. Doing it. Okay, because I've added the permissions, but I wasn't able to test it, so I don't. Well, know and and so did did you based on what I just showed you? Are you comfortable now that you know how to how to do the yes. configuration to yeah, test yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll try it once again with my tech. Okay, so so just to 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 replay one more time what I did. What I did was I went into configure global security. Okay. And and I'll try to post the, the recording of this really quickly so that cool. you can look at the recording. Then in security realm, it defaulted to none. I said use Jenkins own user database. And I intentionally allow users to sign up because okay. initially there's no user defined. Yeah. And with yeah. no user defined, I would be locked out and have nothing I could do. So yeah. okay. I, I allowed users to sign up. Now I can, having done that, then I, I also changed, instead of authorization, anyone can do anything, make logged in users can do anything. Okay. Now, if you wanted to get even more sophisticated, there are other techniques, but for me, logged in users can do anything already shows, shows the example. So okay. did that help? Yes, 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 that, that helped me. Uh, All right, you said there were, were there other questions that we yeah, need to go la through? Last question was regarding the size of the pull request. Uh, what about, is that oh, fine? Oh, yes. With, oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Particularly in this, in this mode that we're in right now, right? The mode we're in right now is you need to be able to rapidly explore and experiment with things. And you need to commit something and realize, oh, that failed. Commit something else. Oh, that failed. And, and it doesn't matter. You just keep doing that. And okay. eventually, we'll probably get to the point where we say, hey, you've reached a point where this looks quite good. Is it time now to rework the pull request to become something you're ready to submit? Okay. And, and then you may, you may squash merge, or you may, you may say, hey, I want to rebase it. Or you may, you may say, I'm going to just take the contents of the files and create a whole new pull request 
that just says what I want it to say. Okay. Yeah. This okay, this then. very much, and I think I think you've got it correctly noted already as a draft pull request, don't you? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a draft pull request. So so that's already telling me and other maintainers don't merge this. Oh yeah. Okay. So so you're you're just fine. The 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 technique you're using works very well for me. I was I was really grateful that you had done it that way because it allowed me to see. Oh, here are some failing tests. And I could see some of your thinking without having to have a meeting with you to talk about what you were seeing. Okay. So yeah, okay. That 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 that's fine then. I'll I'll go. I'll proceed with that. Uh, you know, method only. And uh, what, again, once again, like the plan, like uh, this till Wednesday, the next meet. Uh, what I would be uh, working on is I'll create a uh, you know a way to iterate through all the caches present on the Jenkins controller. I would schedule the you know, already scheduling is done. I'll try working on executing the uh, maintenance task, you know, using the Git client plugin, a basic version. So I think that that is what I will be working on. These two things. Excellent. That sounds great. Now, when are we, when are we next scheduled? Is that, let's see, tomorrow? Oh, two days, Wednesday. two days. Okay, Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday. so if you if we need to meet sooner than Wednesday, let me know. Sure. But but congratulations on the progress you're already making on on how things are going. Yeah, thank you. Anything else, Rushikesh? Uh, one minute. I've written everything on the book, so great. Uh, I think yeah, that's it. That's it from my side. Okay. All right. So, and I still owe you the, how do we do online help for this? Because mm -hmm. I want a question mark right over here. And a question uh, mark. Yeah. Is, uh, one more small thing. Uh, the button, can I put the terminate button beside the save button? I don't know. Uh, I feel that that UI looks better, but I'm not able to do anything with that. In general, I don't think so. Well, let's see. Let actually let's let's ask. That's a very fair question. I think there is. Let's let's look at the UI samples that are available because in the design library, I thought that there were some buttons that we could see. So here's the buttons thing. All right. So this. No, that didn't help me app bars yeah okay so i think what you want is well maybe yeah maybe maybe what you want to do is consider an app bar that goes at the top of the page where one says save and the other says temper says terminate or or okay. one says save where is that? Execute. Sorry. How embarrassing. Yeah. So one says save and the other says terminate or cancel. Now, now let's, let's see if how that, that might there. I think there are things like that already in Jenkins that are consistent that way. Like, yes. Like the save and apply here. Okay. Right. So, so this kind of thing is is certainly a valid a valid technique although i think this concept of the app bar may be better suited for what you're you're wanting to do i think the app bar would be on top right the right screen. which which for me is actually better right because okay. because the 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 user hmm does some data and then they hit the bar at the top. Now, let's see if we got other examples in the maintenance tasks like configuration, uh, configuration as code has a, a rather old UI. So this one definitely has two buttons side by side. So we could- I, I, if, I tried looking at its code and then I couldn't replicate the same thing on my side. So- Okay, all right, yeah. okay. So so you you very wisely went looking for someone else who's done, done the same kind <laughs> the of thing. Same good, thing. very good, excellent. And this one has just the save and apply. Okay, so so I think and manage plugins is a whole different user user definition UI. So uh, how about 
and this one just has save and apply. Well, should we ask a different question? Should this be save and apply? What does terminate mean? Oh, uh, terminate. Oh, yeah. Execute is to oh, run and terminate is oh, to, you know, right, stop running. Right. Okay. Okay. So, so execute. Execute truly is. Yeah. I think, see, for me, I think this belongs at an app bar up at the top. Oh. Oh, where exactly would it come? Like on top on, in the UI? Is, is it like beside the... Design I library. think I think it would appear. I think it would appear. It would the way it would render would be like this, where you would it would say maintenance tasks, and then there would be a button up here that says save, and another one that says execute or switches to become terminate. Okay, so I think yeah, that looks better. I will, will I'll, I'll experiment with that as well. So. At least, yeah, by all means, try it and see yeah. see what you think. You may say, yeah. no, Mark, this is totally unacceptable. But but for me, the 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 whole the whole set of checks that you're doing here would would actually be quite well suited by having a save, execute, and terminate across the top for no. git maintenance tasks. Okay. I'll, I'll look into that once. All right. Any other questions? That, that's it. Okay. I think that covered it then. Thanks very much, Rishikesh. I will try to get the, uh, get the recording uploaded within the next, I hope, 12 hours. It okay. needs some time to, to get it processed. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording now. Thank you.